Squeeze, squeeze the ball, squeeze the ah, ball. Yeah. You're in the right place, mate. You ain't training hard enough. Squeeze it up, squeeze it up, squeeze it up, squeeze. You need to know why you're fucking doing it. Maybe oh, not. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's always a surprise when you do the set with you. Power! Upper chest, come on. Drive it through. If I don't do this, I'm a fucking loser. Yeah, I relate <laughs> to that. That's how I used to do it. These are the ones that count. Yeah. What's up guys and welcome to today's video. We are in sunny Marbella as you can see behind what absolute scene. I'm only here for a couple of days and because I'm only here for a short period of time I thought hey, may as well try and get in touch with Dorian Yates to see if I can do a round two with him. It was five years ago I trained back in Rear Delts with him and I very much want to train with him again. Not necessarily to have my form critiqued, but literally just to have someone push me and just to ask the six time Mr. Olympia legend himself some questions because he is a very wise man and he's got a lot of wisdom to spread. Yeah, I remember the old uh, temple, yeah? Yeah, yeah. What are we training today? Well, I thought it would be obvious to go train legs, but I put a poll out on my YouTube. It was okay. actually uh, chest and biceps. All right. Go listen to the people. Just give them what they want, huh? Some body parts like back and legs, I do pre exhaust. So I do an isolation exercise first, like pull over for back leg extensions for, for legs. But I personally never found a real isolation exercise for pecs that I feel like really works without putting too much strain on the shoulder. I prefer to start with a compound exercise on chest. So let me get on there with no weight and I'll just show you the motion, medium grip. Is that Basically like mid the, middle finger on the little strip? Depends on the, you know, your length of arms and everything, right? Yeah. So not in like that, too much triceps, not out like that, too much, too much uh, limited range and too much on the shoulders. So you can see my forearms are kind of parallel to each other. A lot of people lift off and they start from out here. Bring it over so it's in line with your sternum. So we're there, we're nice and tight, everything's tight. Come down, touch the sternum, and return. We're gonna warm up. All right, so we're gonna go 12 here. Yeah? Slightly slower on the, on the lowering of the weight, the negative. Push, one, two, 10, two more. Push, and again. Okay. So what do you normally do then for chest? Well, for me, I do a lot of incline pressing yeah. because I feel like the, the lower pec has always been quite developed. And for me, I would say definitely it's probably more of a strong point. So be incline barbell press, incline dumbbell press. Yeah. Maybe I, I would probably only do about two or three chest exercises a week because yeah. I want to try and focus on maybe shoulders more, back more. I think proportionally my back can do with Okay, well, what we, we can do, uh, got a hammer incline there. Mm -hmm. We can take that as a second exercise just because we've got control on there because it's a machine, yeah? yeah? And with the machine, I can give you extra negatives. So at the end, when you fail positively, you, you haven't fully failed because there will be still some strength in the negative, yeah? yeah? So that's the why we try to slow it down on each rep just to try to tax it to get somewhere near yeah. to failure, but probably still, even though you reach positive failure, there'll be some left in the tank. So what I'll do is I'll lift it to the top. Yeah. and you just do the lowering of the weight. And you can probably do two more reps like that, mm -hmm. okay? Can't do that on a free weight, not safe. You know, back in the day when you were like training in your prime, did you always have a training partner for every single session? Personally, I always had a training partner, yeah. 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 Because I was going heavy and going to failure, it's, it's, uh, it's not safe on some exercises. And you know, mentally, if I say to you, go, to hit, go on the decline press to failure yeah. on your own, you're not going to do it because you have the danger of getting stuck under the bar and that's always going to be in your mind. Yeah? Yeah. So you need a training partner for that or at least a, a good spotter, you know? Yeah. We're going to go medium set now. Eight reps. But the idea is not we're not going to fail it yet. We're still part of the warm up process. So okay. I don't need to go maximum yeah, yet. Okay. Third set maximum. Well, it's been a very long right. time since I did a decline barbell press. Three. Four. <laughs> seven. Okay, rack. How's that feel? It was nice. Heavy as it can go now, more or less, you know. A hundred, I reckon, will probably be too easy. All right, let's put that on there. Rather than overestimate, you're not going to get enough reps. I'd rather be slightly under. And if that's the case, we can always do it. You know, we can always do another set. My goal here is to take each exercise we do safely to failure. So whatever we need to do to warm up, we do it. So you would build it up and then you do the all out set at the end. Yeah. The heaviest, most. Exactly. You're warming up, obviously for obvious reasons, you're getting blood in the area. You're also getting that pathway firing, especially this, because it's, it's not something that you do every week. You know, your nervous system, brain, everything under, has to understand uh, the movement. So it takes a few sets to do that. 
Two sets is normally enough on the first exercise. So we see how you go with this, and if it's not enough, we do another set. Right. Yeah? And you rest period is like, basically when you feel like you can go and you give it 100%. Certain exercises require longer rest periods because more muscle mass involved, more oxygen debt. Yeah. You know, if you're doing legs or you're doing heavy back, you're gonna have to rest longer than a chest, or chest is gonna be longer than biceps maybe, so. Well, I always tell people rest until you're ready to go again and match All out. or improve upon the previous set's intensity. Yeah, you don't so want to you you be, if you're breathing heavy from a set, yeah. and then you rush into the next one, mm. you could reach failure because of your cardio system, but it's unlikely on chest, but we still need at least a minute to rest, you know? Yeah. Yep. One, two, three, hop! Your bar. Yep. Yes. Push. <laughs> two. Up. Push. <laughs> two more, come on, let's go. Full power. Push, 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 one more. Drive it up, drive it up, drive it up, drive it up. Squeeze, squeeze the bar, squeeze the bar. Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, that was a good set. Good set, man. I think that was a good, that was a good, was a good estimate for the yeah, weight. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, man, perfect. You can only do that with a training partner, and I've got one of the best. Would you like to try something else, like one last super intense set I can show you? We're gonna go up 10 kilos, yeah? And we're gonna do rest pause. So you do what you can do. Yeah. So let's say three or four reps, huh? Yeah. Rack it. Take a 10 second break. Maybe yeah. you do two reps. Rack it, maybe you do one. Like, so basically, in this way, we're, it's not just the last rep where we're going to failure. We're going to failure like three times within the set. So that's super intense. Did you do a lot of rest pause training? Yeah. I, got, I used to do it if I kind of felt like I was getting stuck on a certain exercise. Yeah. Or any intensity techniques, it's like, my pecs were not my strongest body part, my biceps were not my strongest body part. So I use like super intensity techniques on there where my back I would just maybe just go to failure, yeah. something like that. So it's not something to be overused because it's very stressful on your nervous system. Well, stress is why you adapt. Yeah, yeah. You've got to balance the stress with like, can you recover from it? You know? yeah. But I think it would be interesting for you to try. People that are watching, they can, they can see this technique because it's, it's not one that's used very much. Yeah. I've noticed I've been doing quite a lot of traveling and I've been training by myself a lot of the time and I'm like slowly getting closer to my own comfort zone. Yeah. I haven't really, really pushed myself for a, quite a while and I well, need that. You're in the right place, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna change today. What would you, what advice would you give to people who, you know, they feel like they're doing everything right, with their training, sleep, nutrition, yeah. but they're not seeing any change? Well, then they're not doing everything right, are they? You know, yeah. if you are going to the gym, and you know, you've got your diet, you've got your training, and you're doing it for two months, yeah, and you have not seen any progress in two months, or even a fucking month, yeah? Do you think that if you continue to do what you're doing, you will see progress the next month, and the one after, and the one, of course not. Yeah. You do the same thing, you get the same results. So if it's not working, you need to reassess, the, you know, look at the whole thing, I don't know, on an individual basis, you need to look at your training. Are you training intensely enough? One, are you training possibly too often. Those are the two common things. Yeah. I rarely see anybody training hard enough. Yeah. Rarely, yeah? You ain't training hard enough. Secondly, you're training too often. That's it, yeah? If you're in the gym for more than an hour, you are not training. You're in the gym. Yeah. yeah? 45 minutes to an hour, hardcore, pushing. You know, whatever you do at first will work. If you do push-ups, you haven't done push-ups before, it'll work, yeah? Fairly, not perfect training, you will give you results to a degree. Then your body gets used to that, then you've got to really look into what you're doing and how you can increase the intensity. Are you recovering fully between the workouts before you go back in and again? That's very important. Less is more. I think the, the intensity aspect is the hardest because if you go tell someone you need to train harder, they don't understand what intensity is. They don't yeah. understand what hard work is. And probably one of the best ways for them to actually experience it is to go and train with someone who's going to push them. The they, 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 feeling people, is knowing. Some people don't feeling have it in knowing, them, yeah? You yeah. could have a theory in your head, but until you do the thing or you yeah. feel it, you don't really know. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I heard it like pr practically off everyone that comes to train with me. Ah, I thought I was training hard, but now I see. Yeah, yeah there's another level. Yeah. yeah. And once you show the other level to people, some people just click and they get it. And like, yeah. right, that's what I need to do now. Yeah. I've been there, so I know now. That's what I try and do. I try and match, match it with every session. All right, mate. Plenty of rest now. <coughs> Let's bang this. Come on. Your bar. Push. Ah, come on. Push. Push. Push, 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 rack. Okay. Breathe. Deep breathing. Deep breathing. Ten. Nine. Three. Two. 
Come on, let's try a double. Come on. Push. One more. Push. Push, 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 push. push, 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 push. Back. Okay, another 10 seconds. We're going to do a single, yeah? Breathe through your nose, deep through your nose, out through your mouth. Two. Up. Yep. Come on. Come on. Power. One more. Push. The fibers feel like they've just been fucking ripped. Well, they in are. In a good way. Important note, though, you can't train like this all the time. Five or six weeks, in my experience, is then you need to. Did you have a deload week? Yeah, after you that? need a couple of weeks lighter training. 12 to 15 reps, get the blood in there, maybe two or three reps short of failure, not even going to failure. Yeah. Maintenance phase. Maintenance and recovery. How long would that be for you on average? Depends on the individual. Like, if I train people, I'll like, be like, you're just like fucking raring to go now. You feel like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, normally it's two weeks. Yeah. Six and two is a good general, you know, because everybody varies in their ability to recover. Genetically, lifestyle. Are you taking hormones or not? Yeah. All those things affect your recovery ability. Pecs are warm, delts, everything's warm, but this is a different angle, different exercise. So we're going to do one light one for you to feel it out, yeah? Nice and easy, yeah? What's your training looking like at the moment? You still, you still got the size on you. <laughs> Funny story, mate. I hardly do much weight training. I do like twice a week. But it's very limited because I've got rotor cuff tears in both shoulders. So the only thing I can do is fairly light uh, dumbbell bench press without irritating the shoulders. I can do laterals one at a time. I can do like rows of the cable, a bit of biceps and triceps, and I, I can do legs heavy if I want, but I don't go super heavy. I go more high reps. Yeah, just twice a week. Well, one upper body, one lower body, and then I do my other things. But like yoga? Yeah, yoga, biking, yeah. Pilates sometimes, but about two or three weeks ago. I decided to use some of my own creatine. Like, oh, let's give it a go, yeah? I can put on like half a stone in, in two <laughs> weeks. Just went boom. <laughs> What's up, the DY nutrition? Yeah, there's, we got little sticks with a creatine stack in there. Yeah. Uh, five grams of creatine, like three, I think it's three different kinds of creatine in there. But yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't been interested in muscle mass, but I thought, oh, let's just try it and see what happens, yeah? What I don't notice is when I was using steroids and I took creatine, I was like, ah, you know, you don't notice the effect. Not, not dramatic, yeah? yeah. But when I, because I'm not saying anything now, I took yeah. it, it was like, boom, yeah. straight away, because the muscles probably had room to, you know, fill out a little bit more. And I got stronger as well. Like, I would say 10% across everything in two weeks. Yeah. So well, that, that's like an actual legit supplement that's going to work as well. Like, there's so many studies proving that creatine works, yeah. and it's been on the market since mid late 90s. Yeah. Everyone still uses it because it works, yeah? And there's so many scientific studies showing that. And you know, before athletes were using creatine in UK, they were giving them to the race horse, it was given to yeah. the race horses. <laughs> that, that was where it started. Oh. Yeah. Because, you know, the explosive power for race horsing. No, no, that's a thought, I'd, get, I'd lose my hair. What's that? There was like one study where creatine was linked with hair loss. Ah, bollocks. And I've got the worst hair genetics, like I've had a hair transplant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like in that last video. So if you I'm... eat too much steak, you'll lose your hair then? Nah, no, no, I don't believe that, man. So I think it was never really properly proven. Yeah. But I saw it and I was like... Right, I'm going to help you to the top. We start there, yeah? Ready? Okay, one, yep. two, three, up! Hold it there, push. One, okay, nice. Let's drive it. Two, seven. Upper chest, come on, drive it through. Yes, and again. Squeeze, drive, 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 drive. One more. Squeeze it up, squeeze it up, squeeze it up, squeeze it up. We've got one more, Mike. Come on, too easy. Come on, drive it. Right, hold it there at the top. You're coming down real slow now, yeah? Real slow, real slow. And me and you, we're going to just throw it to the top. Ready? One, two, three. Up. Slower, 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 slower. Okay, good. Feel that, right? Yep. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's always a surprise when you do the set with you. <laughs> when you think you're done, you're not done. Yeah, well, there's always more in the tank, yeah? Negative range of the motion is always stronger than the positive, yeah? So even when you've reached positive failure, there's still juice left in the tank on that yeah. negative. So this way we can exhaust everything. Positive, negative, everything, finished. Yeah. Now. What's the point to do another set on here? No point. It's like shooting somebody twice that's already dead. Yeah, uh, you know, it's job's done. Do it as well. Job's done. If you do another set, it won't necessarily do anything more to stimulate growth, but it will be putting more stress on you, on your nervous system, making yeah. it 
harder to, for you to recover. Yeah? So we want to do the job, we want to send the signal, but we have to recover from it. Stress, recovery, overcompensation. That's the process. Yeah? You don't grow before you recover. Yeah. You need to recover first. So if you're going and training hard, great. But then if you're going in before you're fully recovered, you're getting nowhere. Yeah? You need to allow that process time to take place. Yeah. And that, again, varies between individuals for various reasons. Um, for you, you always had an approach where it was pretty much within a week or around about... Six, seven four. days I was hitting a body part, yeah. yeah. Six or seven days. And then of course your smaller body parts like biceps and triceps, although you're only working them once directly, they're still getting receiving some stimulation from whatever, chest pressing or shoulder or yeah. rowing or something, you know. They probably recover quicker, but they're still getting hit twice in a, in a way. Once isolation and once indirectly. Yeah. Was, your, was your split always the same? Or did Went it through various things over the years, yeah. you know, and I used to train three times a week only when I was beginning. Because I was working and obviously I wasn't using juice and yeah. what have you, so recovery is a bit slower so yeah I was training three times a week and then for the Olympia it was like two days on one day off two days on one or two days off depending on how I felt because I always positioned that after legs yeah and sometimes after legs I felt just like I need two days rest you know all right let's go do a little bit of isolation now so for those people that can only train three times a week you can still make a hell of a lot of progress but you have to train intense and make the sessions count <laughs> I'm nervous. This is a, it's a fly or a press? Fly, fly, yeah. And, you know, as you say, you want to work on the upper chest. Can you, can you show me what? Because there's a right. few different variations of a fly. I want to know what you would go for. Would you do so, pronated grip or supinated? Facing. Yeah. Yeah. Arms, as you come down, they're bent like a hook. Yeah. yeah. Then you come up, still bent like a hook. If you feel that point where the resistance is just going to maybe fall off, so you never go back down again. No, you push him with your triceps. Yeah. Out. yeah, trying to keep it out trying to isolate as much as possible. All right, the triceps are there, they're stabilizing, but we don't want to lock out at the top. That's yeah. just more triceps. So we're trying to keep the tension on the pecs. You'll notice you'll get to a certain point and the, the resistance is falling off. So that's as far as you should go. 10 reps, yeah, nice stretch, squeeze up. We're in there, yeah, that's where we are. Squeeze. Good. Two. Oh. Squeeze. Six. Squeeze. Seven. And again, you got it. Come on. Squeeze. And one. Squeeze. Yeah. I'm betting that felt harder than usual. Yeah. Just because everything. Because you fried it on the previous one. Yeah. yeah? You did negatives on the upper chest. I always, I always notice when someone is watching over you, someone like you. You're like, well, I'm going to fucking do this right. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of extra motivation. Yeah. But the thing is, that's why I tell everybody. Yeah, I did it because you're standing there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But you did it. Yeah. Yeah? So I was, just imagine I was a, I was a, I was a form of motivation watching. because I was standing there showing yeah. you. So I was a motivation. Find your own motivation. Whatever. I'm, you know, you've done it. You've just done it. So you know you can do it. Yeah. So you can do it next time. If you need to imagine me standing there shouting at you or whatever you need to imagine, that's... You know, that's up to you, but you yeah. need to have that. You're not going to push to very uncomfortable places unless you have a motivation. You need to know why you're fucking doing it. Otherwise, you're like, fuck this. And you know? because you were always obviously working towards something, did you feel like the motivation was pretty consistent or did you have the days where you're like, nah? Well, I, I had always a long-term goal, which might be a competition. So that's yeah. a yearly goal. Yeah. But I'd break that down into months and I'd break the months down into workouts. Yeah. So I'll be coming to this workout now knowing exactly what I did last week, exactly what I need to achieve today, down to the fucking rep and the weight and everything. So I know what I need to achieve when I'm coming in the gym and I'm focused and, you know, not coming in like, hmm, what should I do today? Yeah, like, yeah. you're not going to get very far doing that. Skin color. Yeah, sure. It's a good color. I mean, I'm, I'm always in the sun. Yeah. Like, wherever I am, I'm never in a cold place. Yeah, yeah. But definitely in Spain, the Spanish sun, it makes me go a different color compared to Dubai because I think in Dubai, intense, isn't it? The, the, I don't know if it's the air, whatever it is, I always get like an ashy color of brown, yeah. but here it like pops. Yeah, it's nice here. Uh, good weather now as well. It's yeah. the best time of year, July, August. All right, man, I'm going to be watching you, yeah? Let's kill this, mate. Last set on the chest, yeah? Stretch. Squeeze. Yeah. Okay. We're flying. Two. Oh, yours. Six. Two more. Come on, push, 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 push. All yours, nothing, come on. 
Oh. Up, 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 up. And we got one together. Come on, get this one. Last one. Crush it. Oh. Crush oh. it. Squeeze, squeeze, oh. squeeze. Yes. <sighs> Excellent. It's good. And we've done like eight sets total. If you a session, an intense session with like not much talking, that's like 45 minutes. Usually. Yeah, we'd be. do something else now. We can do biceps or something if you want. Yeah. And that's what I usually do, chest biceps. Take a little couple of minutes now and a little stretch, yeah? Yeah. 20 seconds, breathe, switch to the other side, do it a couple of sets like that. Do you follow much bodybuilding at the moment? Not, Not really, I mean. Like, is, is anyone you think, who, like, who do you think has got like the best physique right now who's competing? Like, even oh, if it's like classic say. physique or whatever. Physique I look at and I think, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, um, what's his name? Seabum. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know what I was going to say. <laughs> no, it's good, a good, great balance. Comes in good condition, good posing. Obviously not huge because he's in that class, but for his frame, it's big enough. There's bigger guys in the open class, but they don't get into shape. I like to see people in shape, man. Yeah. Like, you know, you've suffered a little bit for this. You've been on a fucking diet. Those guys look like they're, for me, probably got the big. Bit, you know, yeah. like they need to lose another 15 pounds or something. And they don't have the detail, there's the fine separations. It's like a lump and a lump and a lump. Yeah. It's not, you know, the separation in the deltoids and the different muscles, it doesn't seem to be there. You know, they're obviously doing some things different and getting the body weight as high as possible is what they're aiming for. But we, I think we reached a point where it's like, you can go over the point where it kind of, it looks aesthetic on your frame. Maybe it sounds crazy coming from me because I was a mass monster, but <laughs> I still was very concerned with coming in super condition, and I was still concerned with like trying to be proportionate and not freak out certain body parts. I'm gonna do a isolation concentration curl first because biceps are one of my weakest points. So I was doing what everyone else was doing. I started like barbell curls, dumbbells. My front delts and my forearms was growing. Biceps not so well. So what I discovered is what better for me is to isolate it first. You know, with a concentration is great. Uh, I used to have a Nautilus curl that was even better. But the idea is to isolate the bicep, push it to failure. And then when you go to say barbell curl, well, you know, there's going to be a little bit of movement. There's going to be a little bit of shoulder movement, inevitably. Uh, it's a bit looser, but it doesn't matter because like, you've already fried the biceps. You know? yeah. So that's what we'll do. And on the barbell curl, we can do some negatives as well. You can cheat it up yeah. and then low, low, low. Did you, did you tear a bicep once? Yeah, I did that to bent over rows. I had a reverse grip like this, so bent over rows. But both of my serious injuries were near to a competition when I was in you still smashed it, didn't you? Nah, I was still trying to train just as heavy as tense as the off season, but lower body weight, lower body fat, a little bit dehydrated, a little bit tired, get more vulnerable to injury. So it doesn't make sense to be going to failure and force reps and all that kind of stuff. The last eight weeks before a competition, because really at that point you've built the muscle, yeah? You need to maintain the muscle. So your training should be here to maintain it and eliminate any injury risk whilst you know, doing the, the diet and everything to strip your body fat. So that's a lesson I learned that I can pass on. You're gonna be more vulnerable to injury and there is no point to push to failure or beyond failure or something, because that is to stimulate growth. You can't do that if you haven't got sufficient calories if you're in negative and you're losing body fat. Yeah. I had a total bicep muscle tear in 94 and I had a tendon tear in 97. Six weeks before and three weeks before. You know, off season I had some little, you know, pushing, pushing the limits. You're gonna get some little, Little minor injuries which require a little bit of treatment and time and stuff like that, but nothing major. Major was twice before the contest. Did you ever like stretch? Yeah, I was always, uh, I learned from Tom Platts. He was oh, the man yeah. on legs, right? So we all wanted to be like Tom Platts. Uh, but I found that squats didn't work for me. I got an injury doing squats, free squats, so I switched. Yeah, and he, he swears by them, doesn't yeah. he? But they're not for everyone. They're for Tom Platts, they're yeah. brilliant. If you watch him squat, it's all quads. His body's upright because he's, he's not very tall and yeah. you know, so it suits him great. But you gotta listen to your body. My, even though Tom Platts was the greatest and he said you gotta squat, I'm like, I can't because he's injured. So let me try other things and they work, so. Did you ever get to train with him? Never got to train with Tom Platts. I mean, I know him, I met him a few times, but we didn't that would have been interesting. train but together. Both of yeah. you in your prime training Yeah, yeah but I, you know, I really admired him for his, uh, his passion, you know? His passion and his intensity for training. You yeah. don't really hear that so much now, yeah. you know? But yeah, it was all about like, this is life or death. You're gonna, if I don't do this, I'm a fucking loser. Yeah, yeah I relate <laughs> to that. That's how I used to do it, yeah? yeah. Someone's gonna come and fucking, take the food from my family, motherfuckers. Like whatever, in my mind, uh, you know, that, that got me into that mood where I want to push and I want to fucking annihilate. Yeah. That's what I had to do. And everyone's got their own story in their mind, but you've got to be in that 
frame of mind when you come in the gym, there's, there's a fucking war, you know? Yeah, got to unleash the monster. I'll show you, I'm going to oh. do it on my leg. Right, the reason I would never use that bench, yeah, is because it's like that, that angle, yeah? So at the bottom, it's there's a lot of strain on this biceps tendon, yeah? And then when we come here, it just falls off, so... Yeah. You've only really got a limited range. If I was going to use that bench, I would reverse it. I would use the other side because it's straight like that. Effectively, what I'm going to do here, upper arm against the leg, up, slowly down, up, slowly down. One, two, nine, one more, ten. Let's consciously slow down the negative a little bit on this one, yeah? Okay. Okay, great. We could go straight in because uh, don't need a lot of rest on the biceps. Four. Five. Six, yeah, strong, man, come on. Seven's yours, yeah. Please. Yeah, two more, come on. Pull, 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 pull. One more, let's do it. Jeez. Up, 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 up. I see it fucking slow now, really oh, slow. Stop yeah. the weight. Nice. I yeah. felt a lot heavier, fuck. Yeah. But I always notice that the first set on a bicep exercise is like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. The second set is like, you're noticeably weaker. Oh, but you're stronger because it's heavier. Okay, come on. So don't forget that negative, yeah? You're going to focus on that. Feel the fibers ripping on the way down, yeah? Five. Six, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Two more now. Come on, watch in. Let's go. Hop. Yes, and one. Pull in, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, squeezing it up, squeezing it up. And you're going to do slow now. Slow. Ugh, Maybe fuck. not. <laughs> nothing left, man. <laughs> nothing left. So you could do two sets like that. There's nothing left. Yeah. Or you could do fucking five, just pumping away, and you're going to do nothing. Yeah. And do ten, pump away. Twenty, thirty, doesn't matter. You've got to pass that threshold. And once you've done that, this job done. I've done that so many times, and like oh, the next day, I don't even feel like I've trained biceps. Yeah. The you're sessions just where I really, really fucking pushed it. Four sets or something, you'd be done. So I used to do that, and when I started yoga, those areas were really pretty good. What wasn't good is like ability to turn and rotate and stuff, because you don't do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I got much better like lateral movement and stuff like that. I do the, I do the weight training to maintain my muscle mass, not to try and increase. I just maintain it at a certain level. Yeah. And then I do some some high intensity cardio intervals on the bike or something like that. Yeah. Yoga or Pilates for stretching and movement. So all round, you know. I want to be able to do things when I'm, you know, I make it to 70. I still want to be able to ride my bike and walk up the hills and feel good. So yeah. that's my goal now. Still, uh, still finding marijuana. Yeah, man. If you've gone back in time to when you were like training in your peak, yeah, would you still? Absolutely. Smoke? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I thought it was. I used to smoke when I was younger. Before I started training, then I started training. I think bodybuilding's healthy. Smoking weed is not healthy, and drinking alcohol is not healthy. So I just stop all that. Yeah. But if it occasional, you know, birthday party or something like that, my choice would be always to smoke a joint rather than drink alcohol. The alcohol's the worst. Yeah, it's a poison, so, you know, you're gonna process that. You gotta recover from it. <laughs> you're already trying to recover from training, so putting that on top of it is not a good idea. Where the THC and CBD, I mean, Do you reckon you could train high as a kite? Or do you think that you'd be limited? I do, I, I, I do cardio really super high <laughs> and I do much better. Yeah. I don't get so tired. My perception of the feeling uncomfortable is a lot less and yeah. I feel like my lungs are more open uh, because it, it dilates. Oh, tobacco closes down your, uh, your bronchioles, but the, the THC actually dilates it. So it's, it's you, more you, open. You smoke pure weed. Yeah, no tobacco, no, fuck that. Yeah. It's pure weed or I vaporize. I used, to, I used to do super hard cardio classes with Gal, she's a cardio freak. I used to go to another gym and uh, I just vaporized before I got there and then put my sunglasses on. And <laughs> hey, you hate cardio, 
open up a little bit before, yeah, yeah. and it's fun. <laughs> a lot of guys used to do it before heavy training, but I never did because I thought I wanted to be aggressive. I want to be like, I don't want to be relaxed. Yeah. So I never tried it to be honest, but a lot of guys say they feel the connection with the muscle a lot more. Because uh, people always ask me, and I'm like, I'm probably not the best person to ask. So. Yeah, and if you don't smoke weed, it's not like you just start off smoking it and going to the gym because You'll be fucking. You, you'll be freaked out. Planet. Yeah, yeah. You try it somewhere else first. If you get used to it, then you can go to the gym. All right. So we're gonna warm up with this. See how you feel. Eight reps. Yeah. This, this grip. Yeah. Right, what? One. Nice. Two. Five. Easy. Yeah. Strong man. Okay. How many like clean, solid reps can you go for? Six to eight on your own. Try another ten. Might be ambitious, but we'll give it a go. So which which gym do you train at in uh, Dubai? I mix it up a bit, but yeah. have you heard of B1? That's, 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 that's a huge one I went to with all Yeah, big red one. Yeah, I went to that one. Yeah. That's very good. But uh, I like to change up the scenery, keep yeah. it interesting, yeah, yeah. and it depends what I'm training. So there, there's the Train SF, which is a good gym. A new one, Team Nogs, which is a good gym. Like Dubai, is, you, you spoil for choice. Yeah, I know. There's a lot, huh? But you'll find, I guess, like a lot of the the big names and stuff. They'll be they'll be in Bidus. Yeah, that's the one I went. I had a look around. I mean, well, not all of it. It was so fucking big, but it looked impressive. There's a guy um, called Andrew Jack. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, I think so. He's a ridiculous, just huge, but big and ripped, like all the time. Monster. You compete? Yeah, he's yeah. just started competing now. I need to train with Mikel as well. Okay. I've been speaking to him for a while, but we never actually met. Hey, he's a strong fucker. Yeah. <laughs> right, you ready? Two. Perfect. Three. Oh, five, yes, come on. You got it there, come on. Pull, six. This one's yours, let's do it. These are the ones that count, yes, yes. One more, all right. Up, pull, 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 one more now, one more now. Come on, with me, let's go. Up, pull, pull, pull. Hold it at the top there, hold it at the top there, yeah. Very slow, and then me and you, we're gonna just throw it up, yeah, you ready? One, two, three, up. Hold it there. No, <laughs> you're done, Fuck mate, you're out. done. Oh. Good job, man, good job. Chest and biceps done. Nasty. 45 minutes, something like that, yeah? yeah. 45 minutes, job done. Legs next time. Yep. <laughs> How much, I'm gonna be back in two weeks. Sorry? I'm gonna be back two in weeks? two weeks time. What date is that? Yeah, last week of July, beginning of August. Okay, I'm here until, I think I fly out on the 8th or the 9th. Yeah. Or to go to London for a couple of weeks. But. Yeah. Before that, I'm here, just let me know. So it needs to be done. I yeah. probably won't be talking much during that session. <laughs> You'll be catching your breath, man. I've got one, one more question. Yeah. You and your wife, you've been together for a long time yeah. now. Yeah. Have you got any advice on how to maintain a strong, healthy relationship? Yeah, treat the other person like you want to be treated yourself. Yeah. It's like anything. What you put out in life, your energy, your, you know, what you put out there, it just comes back to you in, in various ways. Yeah. If you show love and appreciation to your partner, that comes back to you, yeah? So if you're frustrated that you're not fe feeling that or something, try giving it first yeah. and, and, and see what comes back. That's, that's what I learned. You pretty much get what you give out in any situation, whether it's a relationship, it's a business, it's a training, whatever. It's what you are projecting out there. You create your, your mirror, you know, it comes back to you. Yeah. So if you're thoughtful and loving towards your partner and you don't get that back, fucking oh, get rid of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, try that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wise words. So if, if anyone wants to find you, Dory Yates, yeah, DUI Nutrition. Just go to Instagram and DM me, it's probably the best way. Yeah. Uh, and Gal does my bookings. Yeah, just DM me Instagram and uh, we sort it out. I do a limited amount of training here, depending on if I'm here and I'm available and stuff like that. Yeah. And I've got a certification camp in September here. So people come here for a week, they train with me, they do the theory, obviously the practical like we're doing now, they do, they go through this, yeah, because they yeah. need to feel it as well. And uh, they get certification at the end and they can train other people and, and other train, they can certify other trainers so they can get revenue back as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have fun, we hang out and you know, we have lunch, smoke some weed if you want, don't have to, <laughs> but it's, it's available. <laughs> and you know, it's a nice week. People get to hang out with me, we get to, you know, we do the work in the gym, hard yeah. work, but we you know, have a bit of fun as well. Yeah. So it's a nice week if uh, if you want to take a look at it, it's DYHIT, the website, and uh, certification, all the info's there. So. Awesome. All right.
Well, Thanks, man. Pleasure. Great workout. Thanks for your effort. Cheers. Well, that was very good. My, my chest and my biceps, like I, I feel like they've noticeably been ripped apart in a very good way. And that just goes to show, like, I've been training a lot by myself and I've not, I've not been pushing myself to that same level of intensity. Yeah, I think I need to train with a training partner. A training partner who knows what to do and who's going to concentrate and actually spot me in the proper way. But that was absolutely class. I think next up is legs. Probably not going to be doing much talking in that session. It needs to be done. Like, I'm, I'm petrified, but looking forward to it at the same time. Thanks very much. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. I'll see you in the next video. What?